Okay, guys, so episode seven of the Better Podcast, we're back. I'm your host, Lorenzo Cole, and today we have a special guest. I was just joking with him earlier that we were <laughs> we were dealing with, uh, you know, practice sessions before we get on to the big legends of South African football. So this guy is a Bafana, former Bafana, Bafana captain, the record appearance holder, 107 caps. He corrected me earlier, 107 caps, over 200 games in English football for Blackburn Rovers, and Portsmouth, he played for clubs like Ajax Amsterdam, Burskut, uh, Genk, uh, Bayer Leverkusen, and Jomo Cosmos. Um, none other than Aaron Mbazo. <laughs> Welcome to the Better Podcast, my brother. Thank you, thank you, Lorenz, for firm, having me, firm, brother. Firm, firm, firm handshake there, there. I can see why you were the <laughs> that's skipper. Wh- that's why they call me the ex. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I wasn't playing football uh, during that days, because, yeah, you, were, you, were, you, were, you had a notorious reputation abroad and in uh in south africa but just to start things off um personally the last time i think the general mass media and um and uh, you know the fan base uh heard about you was when you were employed by safa and that was just after um i think it was your first foray into professional coaching space with uh, Cape Town City, right? With Jan Older, recurring, very interesting uh, period for City. Um, but are you still at Safa? What is your role right now? And um, yeah, just yeah. Oh yes, um, I'm quite involved with Safa. Uh, I'm in scouting department mm-hmm. with Safa, working closely to the technical technical director Walter Stienbock yeah. and uh, David Nyati. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we. We're doing scouting for Safa. I'm also the assistant coach for under 17. That's okay. what I can say right now. Mm-hmm. Um, there will be announcements very soon about um, the other vacancies that are there. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, I'll be moving from under 17 to do other bits. But mm-hmm. uh, to answer your question, definitely, I'm, I'm within Safa. Yeah. I'm hoping it's the under 23s because I think that is one of the areas that I'm a bit worried about, but let's not get into that. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's maybe two years now into this role, is this is your second year? This is my second year so far, yes. Okay, so do you find um, in the specific role from scouting, firstly, is it local scouting or is it international scouting to monitor players? Um, has there been any progress um, in what you've been doing? Um, because many people have accused self of letting, you know, some talent slip out of our fingers maybe we're not monitoring the players correctly overseas and things like that look um our job is to scout um south african players who have the ability to re- to represent the country um uh, but those are the boys obviously um throughout to bafana bafana mm. um i don't know what what which talent we have uh, we have slipped out because we we've been to malawi Kosafa. This was um, last year, no, two years back, November. Yeah, November, yeah. two years back, November. Um, we we had quite a um, lot of good players that no one knew about. Um, I can probably talk about Mabena. Mm. No one knew much about Mabena. Um, most people who really are involved, are involved in development, they knew Mabena from uh, School of Excellence. Mm. But um, we scouted him and we he became part of the the squad that went to Kosafa uh in Malawi. We came runners up. Um we qualified for Africa Cup of Nations. And um and the boys did well. I mean, we had to scout players that uh, qualifies for under 17 international now to integrate with um uh, with the local based. Mm. Um, yes, I mean, I can say, obviously, um, you know, money's always been a problem in terms of um, um, traveling abroad, uh, get players from abroad to come in and be part of the national team. Uh, but um, going to Africa Cup of Nations last year in Algeria, we managed to get, um, I think, about eight players um, who who are playing abroad. Um Great talent, I, I, I must tell you. So um, and and we we even had a bigger bigger squad before before going to yeah. Africa Cup of Nations. Um, players that obviously we, we had to cut players 
uh, to get um, the requirement number, which was uh, 23 players. Mm. But uh, we had we looked around. We had players from USA, mm. players from uh, from Europe. Mm. Um, so um, our department is doing a very good job in terms of identifying where. Um, South, South African youth, I would say, yeah. um, are at. Um, and, and, you know, SAFA, I, I would probably say, yes, people can talk, but um, I'm within SAFA. Um, I'm a person who, um, who, who really talk. I mean, when, when it's wrong, it's wrong. And mm. I, tell, I, tell, I tell as, as it is. So mm. um, I think SAFA really supported our scouting department very well mm. in terms of, um, you know, um, identifying the, the talent we have abroad. And, um, and we kept in touch with the clubs, we kept in touch with players and the managers of the players, and they managed to represent the country last year in, um, in Al Algeria. So, um, so far, so good. And the fact that um, Safa, uh, we're now actually moving in a direction of, uh, you, know, um, uh, you know, investing the energy, investing the money into development now. I mean, you know very well, you, you, you have I highlighted that, that I'm still, um, you know, the, the most kept player, the youngest footballer ever to represent um, Bafana Bafana. Mm. Um, it, it, it's about time. I really want to, want to get out there and, 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 and develop or look for that youngster that will, will break my record. You we'll know? get the 108 caps. There we go. I mean, it's doable. It's just yeah. um, to, to get out there and, and, and really, um, you know, <laughs> develop properly. Mm. You know, I always say, yes, we do have coaches, uh, but um, what Walter is doing now, Walter Steenbock, it's absolutely what we, 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 we actually needed for a very long time by getting qualified coaches you know, to coach these kids because it starts from the coaches. Mm. You know, you need to have, you need to have right coaches to coach the kids. Um, uh, it's like being in a class. You need to have a, a right qualified lecturer <laughs> to lecture the kids. Yeah. You know, sure. then you know what you're coaching. Yeah. So, so far so good, I think. I think there's a one thing um, that just came to my mind now. There's a misconception between a lot of the general public that if X player is playing for, I don't know, let, let's just make an example, uh, Villarreal. Right. A, a South African kid who is playing for Villarreal or Dortmund. Um, maybe his parents moved overseas, he gets, right. a, he gets an opportunity. Right. There's a misconception that most of the time that specific player is immediately better than a player that is at, let's say, Kaiser Chiefs' is de development. Um, but you would know this better than others. For sure. When you're not a professional, when you're not in playing in the English Premier League, I think the playing fields are not that big in terms of uh, ability, yeah. you know, from those players. And that's what when you said you had to cut this humongous camp into 23 players. Yeah. I'm sure you saw that. Oh, uh, Siabonga Mabena or uh, Luke Bartman, for example, yep. was perhaps better than somebody that was abroad, that perhaps they didn't have those opportunities. Do you, do you kind of agree there? No, no, I do. I do. I mean, money talks. And, um, you know, you have lucky youngsters with uh, parents that have money that uh, can send their, their kids abroad for better development. Uh, that's what people believe. They believe that um, uh, abroad in terms of... Um, development of football it's better yes i agree uh, but we have uh, clubs in south africa here yeah, your cape town city your sundowns your super sport who i know you know definite that um, they very uh, spot on when it comes to their development uh, they make sure that they have qualified coaches they have nice pitch or fields uh, for players to to train at nutrition, uh, nutrition as well. It, it's so I mean it's broad when we talk about this um, this coaching. But yeah. again, I mean um, to come back to your question, we had uh, a youngster from Spain, um, a central defender, uh, you know, probably taller than me, and um, he was good enough, and he he plays in 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 Spain. Mm. We had another one in uh, West Ham. Um, he wasn't good enough, you know. So for me, I think um, yes and no. Yeah, there are, you know, clubs in Europe um, that are very good in development. 
as much as we do have here in South Africa as well. But they're not professionals yet. That's, That's the problem. That's yeah. the problem. I mean, there's there, there's so much of, um, uh, should I say, it's brown th- envelopes? <laughs> I wouldn't say brown envelopes, yeah. but there's also, there's a lot to go by between under 17 or under 22 professional ranks where things can go wrong. You know what I mean? So you could be on the books of a elite football clubs academy, but then you can also just disappear. You know what I mean? No, no, for sure. For sure. Um, but Lawrence, for, for me, it's uh, let me just make an example about myself. You know, when I left South, Af- South Africa, I was only 16, 16 and a half. And you had already made your PSL debut for Cosmos. Yes, I, mm. I, I played uh, probably 15 games with uh, with the beautiful Joma Cosmos. You know, <laughs> um, I then had an opportunity to go for tryout at Ajax. Uh, the fact that um, I have I played, I graduated in um, in Cosmos, uh, it, and I was playing for the for the under 23s. But you came well. through. Uh, like Cosmos for a couple of years, or did you? Yes, I played. I played um, in in Cal- Caltex. Mm. Um, then was um, you know, under seventeen. Um, I played in, in at reserves at Cosmos. Mm. I then played in the first team, and I also played with the under twenty threes. So um, for me, it was a bit easier when I went to Ajax for tryout because I had... But how does that just randomly happen for no, no. a 16-year-old? I'm just I'm, yeah. I'm out of point of interest. Yeah. Yeah. How does that randomly happen for a 16-year-old kid at Jomo Cosmos? Um, look, you, you mean um, going to play at Cosmos? No, no, like to get a trial at... Uh, yeah, it, it, it's through the, you know, Ajax Amsterdam scouting department. Through uh, playing for uh, Amajita but, or something? Playing for the under twenty threes, okay, um, and um, and Rob Moore obviously uh, was quite involved with okay. with Ajax. And remember the um, Ajax Ajax Cape Town and Ajax Amsterdam. Ajax um, exactly. Yeah. So um, Ajax Amsterdam have invested in um, in Ajax Cape Town. So that actually, um, I think I was so fortunate that um, Ajax was. Yeah was more focused in South Africa. It was a or in Africa beginning to develop. Exactly. Mm. So that's how actually they've heard about me. Okay. And they invited me for tryout. Mm. And getting to Ajax, I mean, it was quite easy because I was in an international, I had that bit of international experience. Okay. Uh, but when I got to Ajax, I had to play in the development um, uh, mm. league. Mm. And I was playing in... Um, in the Tukoms, they call it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that is a, you know, um, a development. Like uh, a DVC. Of, of course. Uh, but I promise you, when you add Ajax um, at development, um, <laughs> it's not, the focus is not only football. <clears throat> in the morning, I had to wake up, go to school. Mm. Uh, from school, I'll come to the, um, to training. When you get to training, Obviously, you have your lunch, and you you obviously start training after 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 taking your lunch. Yeah. After lunch, you have classrooms to do your assignments. You know, you have tutors. Mm. After class, you have your dinner, and you 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 you, 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 you know you go back home. So it was a routine, mm. and and I always say, it would be nice. I know there are clubs in South Africa that are doing that, uh, but would be nice. Um, to to adopt what what's happening abroad, you know, and 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 really be uh, be firm about it because it it, it works. I mean, um, I like to talk about Ajax because it's where actually um, I grew up. You know, being at Ajax at the age of seventeen, um, it, it really helped me. That move to Ajax helped me a lot. I mean, mm. you know, um, contact you know conducting interviews, um, your body posture. Um, you get those. Um, it's not only about football, what you say and what not. It gives you that squeaky clean image over the course of your career because of it, football education as well. But just just to go in, the, where did the, the Leverkusen link come? And then, um, you know, Ajax is a very place that they don't mess around. You need to have some technical ability. Yeah. So, yeah, Ajax, Leverkusen and then Belgium. Just take us through that 
journey. Do, do, do you have five hours? Okay, then okay, it's let, fine. Let, let, then let, it's okay. Let, let's put it together because <laughs> the, 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 the actual important part yeah. is this is just on a contextualizer how you became an English Premier League player. For, right, okay. Know? Then what, what happened then when, um, when, when I went to Ajax Amsterdam for tryout, Leverkusen were... Uh, were interested as well. Okay. Um, I went to this Toulon tournament in, tournament in France yes, with know. the with the under twenty three. Mm. Uh, Leverkusen was there okay. watching me playing. Immediately after the tournament, they wanted to speak to me. Jomo had to fly over to uh, to France to have a chat with them. Now, uh, you know the matter was, um, you know within two two clubs so two clubs were interested in me so uh, but uh, Leverkusen actually came first to okay. put the money on the, t- on the table that's mm. how actually, uh, it happened for me to go in and, and play in um, in Leverkusen but to be fair I didn't even play a single game in the first team mm. I only played in, in, in reserve my heart was still at Ajax because obviously then Benny McCarthy was there and uh, the environment was quite conducive or I, I, it was suitable for me, you know. Um, I felt at home. Mm. I felt that um, being in, in Amsterdam, it's uh, can 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 work for me at that at that particular age. Um, uh, then Ajax had to buy me from uh, uh, well, from Leverkusen was. at mm. that age. So yes, um, that's how actually I got to play for for Ajax. That's that's very. I I didn't know much about that because I mean we were mostly focused on you. Or well, maybe that's because of my generation when you were in uh, in England, um, but <laughs> over the course of your career, you were an extremely committed player. We never had headlines: Mbazo rejects Bafana, <laughs> Mbazo loses his passport, his visa. You know what I mean? Um, and that's how you got your status as a as a record holder for caps. Um, you played in multiple Afcons. You played in World Cups. Do you feel that you were undervalued by the public? Maybe it's different now in a social media era, but that time there was newspapers, there was, you know, seeing people in the streets or whatever. Do you feel that you were undervalued um, because you were a regular at the highest level? Like, let's not beat around the bush. Look, Lawrence, I wouldn't say undervalued. It's understatement, I would say. Um, uh, You know, you know very well, once you played for Pirates, once you played for Kaiser Chiefs, um, you know, in South Africa, you're one of the, whether you can be uh, a horrible player, but the fact that you played for those teams, um, you know, you're, you, you, you get to be liked, liked in a sense. So uh, for me, the fact that uh, people didn't know much about me. Yeah. You know, I left the country when I was very young. Yeah. You know, people started knowing me while I was in the national team. That's when actually people knew about me and again i mean the fact that uh uh you know you go to england you become the free man of london <laughs> uh you play in fa cup fi- final uh you become the you know the captain of germinal beer squad that became the captain of portsmouth um for me i didn't really care about what uh, uh people say it was about you know my job and what you know my relationship with the coaches, and mm. I think um, I, I have really, um, you know, did well um, in that as- aspect. And um, coming back home, I mean, you get um, people who'd like you, you get people who who yes. didn't really favor you. Yeah, but I mean, I think one thing that people also talked a lot about was that you were a defensive midfielder in in Europe. Uh, for the most of your career, when you came to Bafana, you uh, you were centre back. It's kind of a similar situation now, where I'm Toby I'm sure yeah, you you relate yes, a lot yes. as a, as a holding midfield as centre back. Um, were you comfortable playing at centre back, um, or was it also a lot of pressure? You know, you train in a specific position, you play in a specific, and then you come and then you just you know in a completely different position. Look, um, I think what what worked for me, um, Lawrence, is the fact that I was versatile. Okay. You know, I could um um at, at Blackburn um I went to Blackburn Blackburn as um uh, as a center back. Okay. Uh, I played quite a lot of games as center back. Uh, but uh, Mark Hughes, um the manager then for Blackburn Rovers, played me most of my games as a holding midfielder. Uh, mm. I played as a right back as well. Yeah. But most of most of my games was um, holding midfield and um 
and 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 centre back. I was uh, I was comfortable. Yes, I was. I was really um, in the national team here. Uh, most coaches they liked me as a centre back. Okay. You know, um, probably because of my stature one. Um, you know, but the, how vocal I was, uh, being able to read the game. Um, we had lots. Remember in South Africa, actually, we have lots of midfielders. Yeah. Uh, but less defenders that can play international standard. Um, so um, coming back to South Africa, if it really um, a, a coach, um, Carlos Pereira, can see me as a centre back, that means um, you know he knew what is what, what he's doing. So I was quite comfortable to play those positions. I could play, like as I said, um, I could play right back as well. But um, centre back, holding midfield, it's where actually um, in England um, I was I was playing it. Do you think that? Uh because you weren't so known coming into the national team, there was a bit more pressure to impress. Not really, Lawrence. I mean, uh, f- for me, pressure. I don't know what's pressure. Um, the only thing that I knew is that I always wanted to represent my country. Yeah. You know, I I enjoyed I enjoyed every moment when um, when I was with the boys, when I I was in my caps. Um, uh, pressure once you play for South Africa more especially Bafana Bafana any team in the world wants to beat South Africa Bafana <laughs> Bafana more especially here in Sa- said the same thing <laughs> especially here in South Af- in Africa yeah. I mean um, once you wear the national colors mm. um, it's not as easy as when you wear um, Kaiser Chiefs colors not as easy as when you wear you know pirates colors um i would say sundowns they understand now because once they go to africa they still represent south africa yeah. and every team wants to be want to beat sundown so w- when you come to the national setup it's absolutely um it's, it's a interesting it's a to- totally different level and mm. i enjoyed actually the, every moment of it um <laughs> it's funny you you actually played with some serious players at Blackburn. Now that I'm in two guy was in front yeah. of you. Yeah, two guy get a muglu. I will not get into that. Savage. Right? <laughs> yeah, you, had, you had serious players, Cam Peterson, Bentley. Yeah. But okay, that was that was good memories for me. But anyway, do you um, over the career like which were the best players you played with? Now that I'm just, I don't want to be biased now. Now that I mentioned those yeah, guys, yeah. But uh, for club and country, which was the best players you played with and against? How many players you need, Lawrence? Uh, let me let, let's say let's say top <laughs> yeah. three. Let's say top, top three. three. Okay. Mm. Um, I think the first, um, the first one will be Brett Friedel, which but is the uh, goalkeeper, the American goalkeeper. Played like a thousand games consecutively. Yeah, I mean, he was, uh, he was unbelievable. Yeah. Um, yes, I played with him and uh, and. I would say two guys as well as you mentioned two guys Kirumuglu unbelievable with uh, with the ball um yeah. what he could do with the ball uh, even today actually um <laughs> I, I haven't really seen much of that yeah. I mean um that guy could smoke that, that guy mm. could smoke probably a day two packs smoke cigarettes cigarettes yeah and then he comes and he scores a screamer. he would run more than uh, players that 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 don't don't smoke. I, yeah. I, I, I'm not I'm not really, you know, promoting smoking in yeah. uh, in football. But I'm telling you about uh, what you could do in the in the playing and field. And was it like 36, 37? Exactly. <laughs> I mean, I played with him. I think he was getting old when I played mm-hmm. with him. But he would run more than players that are younger than him. Mm-hmm. Um, and Martin Gemst, Peterson, Peterson as well. Um, what a left pack he had. You know, um, mm. we knew that um, with set play, uh, Martin, Martin is there. Free um, kicks, very yeah. quick on the left, um, you know, crossing, unbelievable. Mm. Maybe the last one I would say, it's Benny, you know. Um, at Blackburn, I played with Benny. Mm. Uh, Benny came in at Blackburn um, and he scored goals. I mean, um, Benny could, could score goals uh, out of nowhere. You know, um, he had that quality of of, of scoring scoring goals. Yeah. As he wanted four players, I think those are <laughs> those are players that stand out for him. Yeah, Peterson gave him a lot of those goals on the platter. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But over the thirteen years in Bafana, do you feel that there were any players that you felt were well, done by, or overlooked, or you just sat there like, oh, why is this guy not in Bafana? You mean? Those who were in Bafana or out of um, no, like when you were in the Bafana squad, and yeah, you know, you follow football, oh, yes, and it's okay, like okay. maybe somebody came in and he was yeah. never in again, or somebody you watch and you say, 
Why is this guy never in Bafana? Um, I can't think of any, to be honest, mm. uh, Lawrence. I mean, back in my years, I cannot really think of any. Um, I think I was quite fortunate that players that came to the squad, the players that were doing well at their clubs. Okay, uh, then maybe rephrase underrated. Who is the most underrated player that you played with in Bafana? Within Bafana? Mm -hmm. Over your 13 years. Oh, no one. No one. Listen, um, I think the coaches that I had yeah. at, um, at Bafana were coaches that want, I mean, knew what they want um, from players and mm. they knew their selection. Mm. Uh, they, could, they could spot a player who has the ability to deliver for, uh, for, the, for the national team. Maybe the only coach that uh, <laughs> I, was, I was, yeah, maybe if we talk about the coaches, the coach that you I You had would, a lot of coaches over that 13. The only one coach that I would think, I, I, you know, I had to sit back and ask myself, what is he doing as yeah. a coach for Bafana? Yeah. Ted Dimitri, may his, really? soul, may his soul rest in peace. But um, we don't want coaches like that. I mean, in, in our coaching courses, we always say, as a coach, you have to be honest mm -hmm. uh, to your players. You, you have to be fair. Um, uh, but I don't think he was, he was, I don't think he was an honest coach. And I, to and I told him, I told him, you know, um, I told him that uh, I can't play for, for a coach who's a, who's a liar. I mean, the, the, the situations that happened when he was at Sundowns that I've heard of, mm -hmm. and there's a situation that happened with me in the national team when the, when the, the national team was, was, was going to Tunisia, Africa yeah, Cup yeah. of Nations. It was a horrible Afghan. Uh, Probably the worst one. The worst. They the didn't worst. score I mean, a goal. They didn't score a goal, mm -hmm. the guys, and um, they came back with zero point. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, then I was playing... Uh, FA Cup final and mm. I had a chat with him to say can I please play FA Cup final I mean come on we're taking FA Cup final yeah, yeah, yeah. and we ag he agreed he yeah. agreed that no it's fine boy you can come immediately after uh, uh, you know FA Cup final and I did so I played um, FA Cup final the next day I was in a, fl in a, in a flight coming to, to join the guys when I got to the camp then he says to me hey Munna hey um you're not in the squad. No, no, uh, you. Uh, okay, we we had the players had to vote for the captain. I'm like, okay, no problem, yeah, no, yeah. no problem. I'm, I'm, I don't play for the national team yeah, yeah. to be the captain. Yeah, yeah. I always love to represent my country, but where's my vote? Yeah, because I was part of the squad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, uh, that's democracy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So the 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 guys voted for the captain. Um, voted, or that's voted, what he was saying. Voted. He was saying. I didn't know. Oh, I yeah, don't yeah. know if if it happened, mm. but he didn't know two things. One, um, the vote, the vote, votings were day before I arrived. That's one. Okay. Two, um, in the national team, you don't vote for the captain. Yeah, you select the, the captain. The national team executive committee sit with the coach, yeah. and they choose which which player becomes the. So who was voted? Um, okay, B Benny was the captain. Okay, which I, I had no problem with. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Zuma yeah, was the uh, was nice. the the vice. Mm. Um, then I said to him, "Look, um, the the fact that uh, uh, you 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 lied to me, yeah, um, I can't play for you." And I packed my my my, my bags. I went home. But fortunately, he was gone like a couple of weeks. There later we go. After there we go. Gone. There we go. But um, actually, going into this coaches is actually interesting. Um. We had Carlos, we had uh, Santana, yeah. that were working with Coach Pizzo towards probably the warmest, memorable years of South African football. Not because of the, what happened <laughs> on the pitch, but just because of hosting a World Cup, a 2018 World Cup. Do you think, okay, like this question is, is very loaded. Like, do you think we could have done more in that period preparing for 2010 World Cup? to have been more successful. And this is in a sense of identification of coaches, identification of players, preparation, and so forth and so forth. Over that, I think it was like maybe six years preparation or four, more than four years. Um, Firstly, the coaches. Were yeah, they the look, right coaches? Look, Lawrence, I think, I think we did have good coaches. The only probably where I didn't understand it's when Carlos got, um, got family problems and uh -huh. he had to um, step out and Santana took over. I mean, Santana was 
was a friend to to Carlos, okay. and that's how he got um, he got the, the you know the, the the vacancy. There was and, no interviews in between. And and again, I mean, he, most players like players like in due respect, players like Norm Vete, mm. um wouldn't understand his English. A lot of players wouldn't understand his coaching method and 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 and, and English, and um, he didn't he did not succeed. Um, whether we could have been and again, I mean, remember. Um, when uh, we got the World Cup, I mean, it's it's four years before. Ne? Four I years think I think in that period there was they named the World Cup hosts twice, like the two thousand and six. Yes. So it was more than four years that we knew. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I, I, for me, honestly, I think we have done enough. We, yeah, uh, we did. We, we did actually. Yeah. I mean, remember the players flew to Brazil. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jamaica. Um, USA and um, different players yeah, because yeah. Uh, more especially with Carlos because he wanted he didn't know much of South African players who can really yeah. um, play in international standard so he had to really look um, probably all players mm-hmm. from your N- then it was a uh, NFD Mvela Mvela then oh, yes yeah. from Vela to PSL yeah. and he did so yeah. um till the last you know um selection of uh, players that um, had to be in the squad remember he had to even he, he even had to drop Benny McCarthy had to he had to he had to i mean i, I think for me uh, Carlos was one of the best managers, Pizzo can Pizzo Msimani can say they can attest to that. He was one of the best manager that South Africa have ever had. Uh, not talking about um, Hugo Bros right now, but then and he was the proper. He right, won a World Cup with Brazil. Exactly, exactly, and he was the right the right manager during that period uh, because things that the preparations that we 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 went through before uh, the Mexico game, mm. uh, Lawrence. Um, We've, we've done stuff that I have never seen in my life mm. of football, you know. Um, that guy actually would tell you that um, if you you more than 11, il- like above 11, f- 11% fat percentage, you don't play for his team. So he was quite modern, even though he was like an older he would, he, he, he believed that once you, once you lean... Um, once you you can be able to play in the World okay, Cup. Okay, so that explains why why Benny was not in the World exactly. Cup. Exactly. So, so so and he, he he actually so many times he could say to us like was he upfront about it to him and the squad like this is why he's not in. What he did first, uh, he called myself and Benny uh, in the room to tell him that look, um, not even actually b- before then, he gave Benny um, the programs. To, um, to 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 help him to actually to, to lose a bit of weight, and the last day that um, he had to maybe two days before he had to announce the the, um, the squad, then he called he called me and um, and Benny, and he told Benny why he, he doesn't call him. Um, uh, actually, he would he, he won't take him in in the squad, and he even said that you're the best striker in South Africa, but my principles are my principles. I believe that you overweight mm. uh, to be part of the squad. Um, so that's how actually he, he, he dropped Benny. But how did you and okay, how did Benny and you guys as a team take it? On the spot, for me, um, I, I tried. I tried to actually to, to you know to convince um, uh, Carlos, but yeah. to, Carlos was a person of principles. Yeah. Was was a, was a manager of principles because in the meeting he even said that he worked with you know your Rivaldos, yeah. uh, Romarios. Um, El phenomenon, you know, and and you could see that the, the way they were fit players because he even brought a condition coach from Brazil. from Brazil, one of the best condition coach um, that I've ever worked with to help Benny and uh, to help the team. Hmm. The, that squad, um, I've been fit, but twenty ten. Yeah, you guys could run. We were so fit. Mm. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think really when it comes to the coaches um, and the preparation to 2010 World Cup, we, we, we've done what we had to do. He was actually an interesting coach, actually. Um, he would find play like you said, the talent search that he had. Like, yeah. 
Yeah. The Kuboni. Where did these guys come? Exactly. You know what I mean? And that exactly. was never done previously. Because a lot of the time we were selecting players on popularity and playing for the big team. So uh, you you do make sense there. And then the Khachwe even ended up in, in, in the Premier Fula. League. Yes. Golden, in, from Golden Arrows to the Christ, Premier League. Exactly. Crystal Palace and, and then Fu- uh, Fulham. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. That was Fulham Palace. Um, then God. Yes, correct. Correct. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, going uh, to our current generation and uh, Hugo Bruce, um, do you think there's anything to be excited by right now? And, and, and if so, what, 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 what is there to be excited about? Look, I always said it. Um, I think I, rem- I still remember the first interview of Hugo Bros. Mm. Um, he is exactly the same as Carlos Pereira. Okay. He knows what he wants. He knows how to win games. He knows what kind of players can win uh, the games for Bafana Bafana okay. or what kind of players has to be have to be in the in the national team. So his interview interview he said uh, he actually had an interview with um, Thomas Mlambo yes, yes. at SABC. Um, he said to Thomas, I wouldn't force the player to come and represent the country. Whoever who doesn't want to play for the country, so be it, mm. you know. And from there, um, he went to look for players that are, are capable to, to play for Bafana Bafana. Um, he got us, you know. It's close. He, he got us close, to be fair. I mean, mm. we qualified for Africa Cup of Nations, mm. uh, which was his mandate. Um, we, we got close to win the, uh, the Cup of Nations. So I think we absolutely in a in a good space at the uh, at the moment based mm. on on exactly the facts that I have put on. Yeah, um, but you're happy with like the style of play because I think that is one of the concerns um, from people to say you know we're not not exactly very pleasing on the eye, but I think with the standard of <laughs> so be careful what they say, but with the players that we have at what level they're playing. Uh, PSL, you can't compare to UEFA Champions League, like in the Moroccans and the Algerians. But do you think he's playing the best way to get results? Um, so we should be okay with the style of play. Look, um, I've got nothing wrong with uh, with with Hugo Bros' uh, style of play uh, because sweet players that we have, you know, um, people kept saying we um, he took. Uh, sundowns, sundowns players yeah. and we playing same as sundowns um i mean um, look Sp- spain came to 2010 world cup for so many years yeah um it had barcelona players yeah and they were playing football that is suitable for players that they have so and I think nobody criticized no that. one did <laughs> yeah. no one did and right now that we 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 reached the quarterfinals of Africa Cup of Nations. Yeah. We you know we should applaud the you know um, Hugo Bros and applaud players that um, that I, that they have put us where where we're supposed to be at and build. Now it's all about really building from where we are at the moment and mm. complaining. But I mean, building is also not just okay. Uh, what the coach can do, it's like you said, improving the standard of the PSL, improving the development structures, our, our unders. And also seeing our players progress to different levels. Like, so I want to ask, um, are we perhaps stifling our talent in the PSL by not letting them, not giving them their blessings to, you know, you can reach a ceiling. Let's yeah. say you had Jomo yeah. Cosmos until 23. Yeah. You wouldn't have had 107 caps or 108 caps for Bofana. You know Fair enough. I mean? Fair so enough. do you think we're stifling our talent by not doing more to see them go overseas? Look, um, I I understand what um, you know the president um, Petris Motsipe is trying to do. He's trying to um, to keep the money in Africa and um, and embrace um, our African football. So you well try on that, and, and try and I try know. to to keep um, you know best players in Africa. Yeah. Uh, but for me, I always say it goes back again. I'm going to emphasize on this. It goes back to the coaches. To, mm. um, uh, to, to, to you know the type of coaches we have and uh, whether do we understand that uh, yes there is um, a club level but there is international level as well mm. which um, different are different levels. I always say um, uh, if you want to be the best 
you you have to rub shoulders with with the best mm. and where do you find the best in europe there we go i mean um i i i would probably say we have one of the best league in in the continent um but um it's important that um when when the opportunity arises for players to go and rub shoulders with the best um they need to get that opportunity like look at the i think the biggest case study now for us is the bochum goena yes sound development at harmony academy under 17 and 20 and 23 olympics afcons world cups senior team football of the season now what he's reached the ceiling he's afcon play of uh, you know team of the tournament We, how do you improve now but then Lawrence you know what's important mm. um the important factor here is um so to call european clubs um they don't have to underestimate african players yeah if they want the bohom loy at the or they or they want a good player in 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 africa they should pay yeah once you put the money on the table then you You, you appreciate the quality of the player so i think really by not letting the world to go um you it's because of the money yeah, yeah you can't mm. you can't so it's important that um, uh, people out there respect uh, africans and respect the league that um, uh, we have put together mm. if you want um, good players yeah. pay yeah i think maybe with bafana you know on a road to doing better now on the international stage maybe that will improve but um i opened up uh questions to the public um wow. and i said do, <laughs> do, you, do you have anything to ask mbazo look there were some harsh questions and things but i i, I chose three that i felt were were of value okay okay he said i heard jomos this is from tabo lebepe i heard jomos sona asked you to turn down the soweto giants after He promised that he will take him to overseas and play for Bafana one day. Is the above statement true and who discovered you? I don't know none of that. Okay. Who discovered you? Jomo disco- discovered me. Um I played in a uh interprovincial tournament under 17 in um Advets. Uh Jomo came to watch the the tournament as 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 he always do mm. and he saw me playing and he took me from there. But I mean you said you from the Val, right? I'm from the Val. So how did you get to Vet? I was playing for VFA Val Football Association. Ah, uh, yeah. okay, okay. There's another question. I don't know if this guy's real name, but it sounds like a nickname Lindos. Um how did you manage to deal with the criticism in Bafana Bafana every time you were called up to the national team because you weren't a fan favorite? Look. You know what happened actually? Um <laughs> which is what I'm trying to do every time when I get to um to analyze the games we had agents at the studios to analyze the games hey, back then like as like ABC, SABC, SABC yeah. yes um we have the David Gekanis um I remember yes uh David Gekani Walter was Mugwena. Walter Mugwena. um those were agents of players okay those were journalists okay. who were pushing their own agendas to put their their players in the national team so um, um that's how it came about i mean I, I, i'm going to say what i said again mm. um being the captain of portsmouth playing in fa cup final being the captain of germinal bears hot in belgium mm. what does it say to you there's something so you're saying there was a public discourse from mass media and agenda setting to not like you remember remember that um once we we sit in there as um as journalists or as uh, yeah we have a powerful <laughs> as platform agent, especially on on SABC whatever mm. that you say on SABC an ignorant person will take it yeah it's right? like for example there's like let's say there's 10 youngsters that's very good in the PSL right now, and I talk about two only two I talk about Mofo King and Sh- uh, Shandre Campbell and ignore the other eight the public is also going to be talking about them as there well. we go so that that was the assumption but um like as i said um for me was to wear the national colors yeah. and um uh, luckily i didn't buy any call up <laughs> um i worked hard for it um uh, i didn't buy any cap um i never had uh 
personal relations with uh, with coaches, the coaches. Yeah. All the coaches that that coached Bafana Bafana, they always um, you know send the collab letter to uh, to invite me for the national setup. The final question is from Bokang Mawela. What was it like for playing? What was it like playing for Portsmouth and Blackburn in the Premier League? And what is your biggest moment of your footballing career? Yeah, playing in EPL was out of this world. You know, I, I'm still saying, as I'm the analyst at SABC uh, for English Premier League, I'm still connected with the league. Um, it's, um, you know, the best league in the world, um, revenue-wise as well. Um, you feel that um, you are a professional footballer when, once you play. You can play in your champions, uh, championship um, you can play in your English Premier League, uh, but it's the same. You are treated as a professional. You know um, every training, every game that you need to turn up. It's so packed. it means uh, it means the world. And it's been the league that I always dreamt to play at. So uh-huh. for me, actually, um, yes, it's unbelievable. Uh, it's a it's, you know it's a league that. Um, you know, pl- players that played in England would, would probably attest to what I'm saying. It's a league that um, everyone would love to play. It's a tough league, very, very tough league. Um, and I enjoyed it. So um, FA Cup and the World Cup, those are um, two events that, uh, yeah, say FA Cup. Those are the red nap. No, that no, that was um, Avram Grant. Really? Yes, that was Avram Grant then. Uh, Twenty ten, it was. Was Lasana Diara? Yeah, correct. Correct. What a player. Correct. Yeah. So that was twenty ten. So Avram Grant was my uh, my coach then. Mm. Yeah. So FA Cup final um, against Chelsea in Wembley. You know when I say Wembley? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, uh, it was one of the best twenty ten World Cup at home, the first World Cup in African soil. Mm. Um, it was the best and yeah I would probably say playing in um, the in, in the Olympics as well mm. in 2002 in Sydney mm. uh, Sydney Olympics that was wow beating Brazil beating mm. Brazil those uh, probably are the highlights of my 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 com- my event events that have been part I'm just thinking now like every game was probably like an atmosphere like a Soweto Dar because in England it's packed stadiums, yep. um, <laughs> hostile atmospheres. Yep. I can only imagine what they're calling you in the crowd, <laughs> saying things, <laughs> talking about your family. <laughs> but I want to ask you this, how is your mental health after this? Because yeah. I, I honestly think if anybody was playing at that level, they would probably get goosebumps every time yeah. they play you at such a high or dopamine is, is that how is your mental health? What are you missing that days? Look, um, I, I, I had this question before and I said, um, it was the moment that I had to be there, you know, and I have done what, um, what I had to do. Um, I gave it all in every moment. No of, regrets. Of every opportunity <laughs> that I got. So no regrets at mm. all. I think really um, I did what I, had, what, what I had to do. So yeah, um, I enjoyed it. Uh, I'm still enjoying it now by analyzing it. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I've reached the ceiling, as you always say. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah, it was beautiful being mm. there. I think you're one of the few footballers who can really say that just, we're always talking about oh, what could have been. Ah, this. But yeah, honestly, it, uh, it's, it's been a pleasure just to, to pick your mind on things. Um, I'm not gonna say that I was like completely confident that it would go this way, but <laughs> but I, I'm 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 blown away, and I think that you're in the right place, like you said with Safa now, and I think we 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 can be you know excited about what's to come uh, because you've been there, you've done that, and I think our junior national teams might be in 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 much better position over the next few years. So thank you. For, for for coming to the show, Lawrence. Thank you for having me, and um, yeah, I can always do my best, you know, with my coaching badges, mm. um, with you know, uh, sending the right message to the to these youngsters. You know, we always say we develop human beings. Yeah. Um. You know, some wouldn't be professional footballers, mm. but some would be, and some would be doctors. So, uh, for me, actually, is to get in there yeah. and not. Don't I, I won't coach these boys by saying when I was playing. 
yeah. um, football evolves. Yeah. So for me, being there, I'm enjoying myself, and I would make sure that um, you know I'll 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 I'll, I'll bring my my A my A game to to yeah. these boys. So guys, there you have it. Um, thoroughly uh, enlightening. Uh, episode with uh, Mbazo over here. Uh, he didn't say it, but I think he's indirectly <laughs> saying that he is going to find and nurture and lay the foundations of that next footballer of tomorrow that is going to break his record for Bafana Bafana one day. Um, yeah, very enjoyable uh, chat with him. Episode 7 of the Better Podcast. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Until next time. Yo guys, for the freshest football content, follow 10 Bets of Africa on Facebook, X, Instagram and YouTube.